Well, folks, what a weekend in the AFC. We're going to look at the fallout from that. Who played well against the Dallas Cowboys? Where they go from here? And we're going to have shows for you, except for Thanksgiving Day this week, as they get ready to get ready for their next opportunity on this bye week. Happy Thanksgiving and welcome to Locked On Chiefs. From the land of the free and the home of the Chiefs, this is the Locked On Chiefs podcast. I know it's only Tuesday, but this is going to be our last opportunity for us to record together this week. Matt Derrick will be on the show tomorrow. Mark Schofield will be here on Friday, giving you something new and different as we take a look at where this team is and where they are is better than they were on Friday. That's for sure. Absolutely. And you look at uh, the standings in the AFC and it really changed this weekend. So the Buffalo Bills lost, the Tennessee Titans lost, uh, and two games that well, the Titans, I wouldn't have expected a loss, uh, really. They're playing the Houston Texans. Uh, you know, Ryan Tannehill hasn't looked the same since Derrick Henry went out. So they have big concerns there. I don't know that they're going to continue to be the cream of the crop in the AFC going forward. And, you know, the Buffalo Bills thing, I can kind of get past a little bit to an extent. Yeah. Uh, and I guess to the point of the Colts are a good team. Yeah. But to lose the way they lost, that's a whole nother ball ballgame. Yeah, I mean, Jonathan Taylor, why don't you break yourself off a career there? I mean, whew. five TDs. <clears throat> That's impressive. And, and it's not just him, obviously. Um, the 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 pressure that the offensive line, including Eric Fisher, puts on somebody there for Jonathan Taylor. That's that's a big part of having success. And I, I'm a little bit envious of the way they put it together. We all we talk about Chris Ballard every offseason. He does a good job, but I feel like the Colts and the Chiefs are like in this parallel path. And this is one reason when we talked about the schedule coming out that I was happy with it being tougher up front and the AFC West in the back so that like you have most of those teams have either shot themselves in the foot, fallen apart with injuries, or you just feel like you can beat the guys in your division pretty handily. So now you get the bye week and you get what I think is a much easier second half than first half. Yeah, and a couple of weeks ago, it didn't look like it was going to be that way, but the Raiders have shot themselves in the foot. They've had some other issues that have been going on. The Broncos have kind of, kind of fallen back to reality as to where I thought that they were going to be, which is probably not the best or one of the good teams in the AFC West. And the Chargers are still doing well. They beat the Pittsburgh Steelers, but the Pittsburgh Steelers haven't been playing well. So that Chargers game, yeah, they won, but I still think that that's something to look at as well and go, well, are they as good as we as they looked against the Steelers? Steelers aren't great on offense, so to allow as many points as they did, that's a concern. Just just remember this, Chiefs fans. Guard Mike Williams. That's, that's all I'm going to say. It's, well, it's probably good. And Denver went out and signed Cortland Sutton to a new contract extension, four years, $60 million. And you sit there and you look at it, they just signed Tim Patrick to an extension. They just signed Cortland Sutton to an extension. So – they're signing their young wide receivers, and I think they got a good discount on Sutton because he hasn't played – he hasn't been productive this year. I'm not going to say he hasn't played well, but he hasn't been productive. He's not, not, not going to be fast. – yeah, he's not going to be anywhere near a 1,000 yards that will take the season. Which Unless honestly, he turns it on. Right. There's always that possibility, but I would say for him, actually, that's, that's an advantage because coming off the injury, this is a year where obviously he hasn't had to produce a ton. There's not a whole lot of expectation. Like – this is all setting it up, and I, I'm sure people nationally spoke about this. This is like, you know, put something shiny, like you're you're upgrading the house, you know, a little new doorbell, put a little little camera out there, and make everything pretty on the outside to try and invite someone new into the homestead here, um, whether that be Aaron Rodgers or Russ Wilson or whoever else that they get to. This is all like, I think. Sean Watson? Preparation, well, yeah. Although you don't have to invite him. You have to go out and pay for him. That's true. Of draft capital. Um, so, like, it feels just like this is preparation. Sign your young talent. Be ready to jettison older talent like they did with Von Miller in order to get ready for what might be a short stint of the end of a, of a quality quarterback's career. Well, but you know, I have to also remember that they also upgraded and got draft capital in the Von Miller trade. So mm -hmm. they have a second, third round pick next year that they weren't going to have. And I, we don't want to, I don't want to talk much about this. Uh, but I do want to throw this out there because this was very unique, and I thought that this is kind of crazy. New Orleans QB Taysom Hill signed a unique four-year hybrid type of contract extension that would be worth anywhere between $40 million and $95 million, depending on the position he plays, and includes $22.5 million guaranteed. Taysom Hill's hybrid deal is unique, and unlike any other contracts, pays it 
him 40 million base salary for the role that he's currently playing and up to an additional 55 million if he does become the Saints starting QB for the next four seasons. I just had to throw that out there because it's so unique of a situation, but you have to wonder how that's going to play in the NFL in the future. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely something that contractually gives both parties, like gives them, uh, the player and his reps, something to strive for and gives the the organization some versatility there. At the end of the day, they're going to control whether he's a quote-unquote starter. Does that mean start one game per season for four years? That's pretty likely. So, I I mean, I don't know. I don't think the Chiefs are going to go down that road, but it certainly shows that, like, it's not just the Patrick deal that's become creative. The length and the girth of the Patrick Mahomes deal is, is obviously substantial. But now you see other teams doing interesting things that aren't just garbage years at the end that they can throw away. Yeah, and the Saints have to do something because they're still trying to get out from underneath the Drew Brees contract. So they're still trying to live out that. And you have to wonder what they're going to do in the future. But I just think it's fascinating to see something like that done in the NFL because – who knows what Taysom Hill's role is going to be in the next year? Because it looked, sure looked like Jameis Winston was probably going to be the QB of their future, at least for the next several years. And now he's out hurt. So we'll see. Yeah, it's it's going to be telling how that thing gets rolling. And a lot of people are starting to talk about the QB carousel. That's going to have a big effect on him as much mm-hmm. as anything else, right? Because he's dependent on that. The QBs here in the AFC West are going to be changing most likely. We're going to get into that, but... I just like the fact that we can now come back in a minute and start with the defense instead of the offense every week. So we're going to get that right here in a second. So, yay. (laughs) Yeah, the one person that's going to care about going to defense first. No, I know there's a lot of defensive fans out there, and I think there is a lot to talk about. Chris Jones did play a fantastic game, uh, and I know none of us gave him a game ball in our show, but (laughs) he was – a defensive wrecking ball against that Cowboys offensive line. And I think that's going to be huge going into the stretch run of the next six games for the Chiefs. Yeah, I mean, certainly. And we, we kind of danced around it last night about what was the reasoning and all that kind of stuff. But when you look at, at pressures produced, and everybody's very happy with Chris Jones. Chris Jones says he got seven, uh, got four sacks. We'll see what the official record book says. If, if that gets updated, we'll find out. He kind of threw Jaron Reed under the bus today in his presser, but that's okay. You know, it's going to be what it is. But the key for me is when you look at the pressure rate against the Dallas Cowboys, there's Chris. There's not a whole lot beyond that. There's a lot of guys that have two, and it's Frank Clark that has five. So now you have your two marquee players. And the next guy that actually, I think, showed up more on film than in terms of like actual stats and pressures is Melvin Ingram. We talked about it a little bit last night. That catalyst of having three guys up there on the front that can produce pressure. That's what you have to go have going forward. And a lot of people are talking about, Oh, now that they're healthy, this is the way that it was always going to be. Except for the problem is that in the NFL, you're never fully healthy. So the problem begins is like, enjoy this, take it for what it's worth. But if any one of those three guys gets hurt and has to miss a couple of games again, we're right back to where we were, where they can do multiple double teams. They can chip on the edge. There's a whole lot of things. So cross your fingers, take care of your players enjoy what they did there uh, against the Cowboys. Absolutely. And I think you also have to realize what did Pittsburgh, what was Pittsburgh thinking releasing or letting go of Melvin Ingram? Because <laughs> he has turned into a huge asset to the Chiefs. Yeah, that was uh, that was pretty fortuitous. And, and basically the only thing they were thinking was, we don't want him around anymore. We might as well try to get something for him. He definitely wants out. And that's what they did. Did they strengthen one of their rivals in the process? Yes. And, you know, it's calculated risk. You never know what's going to happen. But um, I think the fan base should be happy that he got here eventually. And quite frankly, the money he was asking for is about half of what he got from the Steelers. So even though there is that aspect, they have to pay off a contract they didn't write. It actually is cheaper than what they were offering him in the first place. Yeah. And they're in a situation where he is coming in and he's able to step into a role that Kansas City desperately needed. And he is contributing in a rate that you didn't expect him to do. And if you look at it from the Steelers perspective, four weeks ago, when or however long ago when this trade was made, nobody thought Kansas City was going to be sitting here four weeks later with four straight wins. Right. So, you know, I can understand their perspective of, well, Kansas City's probably lost their season anyway. Who cares? Yeah, possibly. They they listed too many national talking heads, right, that the sky was falling and it's all over but the shouting, right? Well, guess what? It's not. 
there's there, there's a lot more to it. And it's funny that when you look at the fact that they were shooting themselves in the foot constantly, something that is still happening. We'll talk about the offense coming up next, you guys. But this is important because if you put it all together and you save yourself from hurting yourself, this is what it can be, even if you're not playing at your best. There were gaps in the day uh, for the offense. There were gaps in a couple of plays for the defense. But on the whole, they played pretty well. And I didn't expect to be able to say this, but this is interesting. NFL passer rating against. So which defender gave up passer rating? The lowest rank on this defense for the Dallas Cowboys game was 5.1 rating. Not 150.1, 5.1. Single digit. That is very, very good. And when you put the plays together, this is the way that it comes out. What I didn't expect to say is that it was not Legereus Need with that passer rating given up. That was Trevarius Ward. And maybe the best game of his career. <laughs> you say you didn't expect it. I kind of did against this team. Yeah. Okay. All right. It's, it's his old team. It. Yeah. Revenge games are always are always huge. Plus, he's in a contract year, so it's you know even more. That said, even if he puts out half of what he did this this last game every week, they're in good shape. The next the next best coverage person was Legereus Sneed. So, like, we can see the evolution of where they're going. Nobody on the Chiefs defense, including the linebackers, gave up more than a, a 95 passer rating allowed. That's really impressive. Uh, this is this was a complete game on the defensive side. Can they sustain it? It talks about staying healthy. It requires having matchups that you can exploit. What are, again, people complaining that we're, we're discounting the Amari Cooper uh, factor? No, he would have helped. But it wouldn't, I don't think, have changed the actual outcome. And that's what it's it's going to come down to. Can they sustain this, do you think? So you want to complain about not having a wide receiver. Okay, so let's think about that. C.D. Lamb had, what, three catches for 14 yards? Right. When he went out at halftime, he's your number one guy, and that's what you got him in the first half. I, I thought this was a fascinating stat. I was looking it up. Sorry, it's why I'm staring at my phone. Matt McMullen put this out. The Chiefs pressured Dak Prescott on 38% of his dropbacks while racking up 24 pressures, according to PFF. That's Chris Jones good. recorded eight pressures by himself, and Frank Clark had five. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot of pressure, and they didn't blitz a ton. That was what I think really sticks out to me is they're starting to get home with four rushers, and if they can do that, they have the talent on the back end to be able to be good enough as a defense to continue this run of allowing less than 12 points a game for the past four games. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, by my count, it was 12 blitzes on the night. Yeah. Uh, how many snaps? Uh, what was it? 30 total? Okay. No, so they 48. Did, yeah, so 25% blitz rate, that's not bad. Yeah. Especially that's considering going into the game, Spags – and everybody in the NFL was saying, you don't blitz Dak. It's it's just about as bad as blitzing Mahomes. But Spags was able to get home when he blitzed. Or hey, at least what? get it in the way. <laughs> it's not as bad. For all, all of you, mm -hmm. all you Cowboys fans, listen, Dak Prescott is not Patrick Mahomes. Let's let's just, I'm glad he's playing well. I'm happy for Dak. I, I like him in his story, and I'm glad that he's here. He's not Patrick Mahomes. Take yeah, and, and I'm glad you brought that up because we need to talk about Patrick Mahomes, and we're going to talk a lot about him on Friday with Matt, Mark Schofield. Uh, but when we get back from this break, we do need to talk about Patrick. It's Thanksgiving. You guys know what that means. It's football all day long, three games this year, and nothing goes better than football than turkey and betting. Bet Online has got you covered all holiday season with more props, odds, lines, and bets than ever before. However, the new website, check them out. It's uh, well redesigned. And I think it looks good. Receive your 50% welcome bonus when you sign up with our code. It's called Locked On when you put that promo code in and receive your bonus. It remains the number one spot for all of your sports action this Thanksgiving and everyone after. It's not just football, it's those other things that people tend to spend their time on. It's just not us. Bet Online is the fastest, easiest way to bet all of your favorite sports. Bet Online, we're stuffed with deals this Thanksgiving. So much to talk about when we talk about the defense and really the question right now. And if you look at the comments that we had on YouTube and I've just seen on Twitter, a lot of people are starting to question the Chiefs offense. And I get it. I think that there are questions that need to be answered on the offensive side. And one of the questions that I really need that we are really going to need to figure out. And I think that this is a great time for the buy to come in is that Patrick Mahomes played fantastic against the Raiders. He took mm -hmm. what they gave him. He carved them up. 
and he had a fantastic game. He came back against the Cowboys and didn't play great. I think he missed a couple of throws early. Uh, some people are going to call him drops. I think the throw to Josh Gordon maybe should have been caught, yeah. but I still think it was a little outside. Uh, but my point is, is that he still is throwing the ball more than I think in RPOs than he's willing to run it. And I think that's causing this offense to slow down a little bit. And I'm not saying that they need to run the ball 50% of the time, but when they're getting the light boxes like the Cowboys were giving them, take it, use it. You have the running backs on the field and you have the offensive line. It's not like they're only getting two or three yards of rush. That's the right. other issue. When you're yeah. getting four to five to six yards of carry, or, you know, I mean, run the ball. I mean, what'd they give? Uh, 12 attempts for Clyde. That was the maximum. Clyde ran for over five yards of carry. Yeah. So that is cooking. Uh, you don't, it, it, no, it's not super chunk plays. They weren't, you know, 30 yards down the field. Five yards uh, a, a play gets you where you need to go. The interesting thing is there were 44 dropbacks. Patrick attempted 37 passes. So that's seven plays that he dropped back and decided to hand it off. That's not enough. If those were, if there were 10 more RPOs called, that's clearly not enough, especially when I think certainly the game before, but even the, the Dallas game showed you what the run game can do in terms of the physical wear on the defense that I thought set them up for some of their bigger plays as well. Well, it comes back to you, you have you have the enemy calling the plays in. You have Andy Reid really setting the the overall goals. I I questioned back and forth like who's actually calling each play, but it certainly looked from the broadcast like it was the enemy. Yep. So I that comes that. down to Patrick making decisions on the field. Yeah, and I also want to throw out there that Tyree Hill had a run for thirty three yards early in the game. They never went back to that well, and I really think that that's somewhere that they should be going back to. And if you want to get McCole Hardman Moeller involved in this offense, you don't have to throw him the ball. Do those short little pitch passes that they like doing from time to time. You know, throw one or two of those in a, a half and use that type of play. Get the defense going, you know, side to side. I'm okay with McCole Hardman going, you know, east and west as opposed to north and south to start with. Yeah. Use those types of motions, get the defense off balance, and then you're going to be able to do more. But with Clyde running, for five yards to a get to a carry. I mean, you don't get away from that. You use it. Daryl Williams wasn't doing great. He only had what three yards, a little over three yards per carry. Yeah. But you still run the ball. Yep. You still take that opportunity to run the ball and that is going to wear their defense out more. And the other the other thing that a lot of people are talking about, and the other thing that I really saw last night or yesterday, sorry, in yesterday's game. Travis Kelsey has to figure out what's going on with Travis Kelsey. And he's, he's the had, only one who can. Yeah, he's had too many mental lapses this season. I'm not trying to be hypercritical of the guy. I love Travis Kelsey. I love the fire he brings to the team. I love the way he plays. It's fantastic. But he has dropped way too many passes this year. And he hasn't let it get to him. He hasn't let it bring him down. That's a good thing. But he cannot continue to drop passes. And he cannot turn over the ball and and Patrick's interception yesterday was on Kelsey. That wasn't on Patrick. Yeah, I, I can, I can understand that. I, I will agree with that as well. And I don't, I can't put a finger on it. Clearly neither can he or he'd stop it by now. Right. So you and just he fumbled have earlier. Uh, he fumbled mm -hmm. early in the season. So uh, he's still having a good year statistically. Yeah. I it just, he's got to figure out the drops and if he can figure that out, he'll be in a much better position. I, He's a great player. I'm not trying to be hypercritical of the guy, but he's got to get over those drops because some of those drops, Mahomes trusts him in critical situations. And he, when he drops it, it hurts even more than just a normal drop because he's getting thrown to on those third downs. Yeah. And, that and interception was going to be a, that interception was a third down play, a deep third down play that would have gotten them a first down. I think put him inside the what? 25 yard line, 30 to 25. Yeah. Dallas. I mean, they were right getting ready to knock on the door of, of Dallas for scoring again. So, um, got to get that ironed out. And and, and he's he's injured too, so you have to take that into account. I think the bye week's going to be good for him. Uh, hopefully, he can get off, you know, take care of that neck and and figure out that injury and uh, get all get it all squared away. Another stat that I saw today that I thought was interesting that I never would have guessed. Tyree Kill is three catches away from his career high in catches. Ah. In 11 games. 
Well, it's funny when you don't have those drives that end in 40 and 50 yard plays takes a couple extra passes to get down the field. Right. So I, I think we're seeing statistically maybe more recognition in a, in a quote unquote down or slower season for the offense. Yeah. And Hill is actually less than Kelsey when it comes to yards per catch. Hill's like 11.2. Kelsey's like 12.3. So that is quite different than it has been in the years past. And uh, if they continue to hit the shorter plays, that that stat will continue. I still think at some point teams are going to have to give up, you know, and they're going to have to bring a safety down the box and they're going to have to stop the run. But Kansas City has to make the pay in the running game before they're going to do that. It definitely needs to. like, And you have to be able to produce that balance even if you don't want to use it, you have to threaten with it. And I think that that comes along with a couple of other things. One, using your tight ends effectively. We all know that they miss Jody Fortson. I think you made a very valid point on that last night. Blake Bell had a what one nice catch, had a couple of nice blocks. He ended up, um, his best grade on the day, according to PFF, was his blocking, his pass blocking in particular. Same situation with Noah Gray. So, you got to enjoy that aspect of it. I think they went far and away from what they did with Gray the previous week. I, I was a little surprised by that. Um, one target for eight yards, but it was the snap count at 18, which is a two thirds or a third reduction over like, uh, I think it was 28 the week before. I, uh, that combination of being able to chip, being able to run, those two things interior to the hashes, I think, is what's important, and they got to keep that up. And, and Andy's just got to bite the bullet and stay with it in order to get out of this slump. Yep, I can't, I can't disagree with you on that. Now, I'm going to throw something out that we hadn't discussed before we started this pod, but I want to get your opinion since this is the only time we're going to talk this week. What are three things Kansas City, in your opinion, needs to focus on in this bye week to get better for the stretch run? Because they have three AFC West games coming up in the Broncos and then the Raiders and then the Chargers, I believe before they play Pittsburgh, and then I believe they play the Bengals and then the uh, Broncos again. So yeah. what are the three things that, that they need to do in order to improve? You know, despite what we saw from the defense this, this last game, <coughs> excuse me, it is to maintain what they did this week in terms of pressuring with four. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see them be able to back the blitz off a little bit more. On the offensive side, it's about getting in those weapons that have to be the tertiary receivers. Noah Gray. Josh Gordon, Byron Pringle in particular. Pringle played the most snaps of anyone not named Hill or Kelsey that are pass catchers. That, I think, is a trend that must continue. He's earned it, and I think he's performing better. And, and then you have – I just want to throw this out there on Pringle because you pointed out that RGR has been in on Pringle, and I have been in on Pringle for a very long time. But I have to also say he's earning it not just because of his snaps at wide receiver or not because of what he's producing as a wide receiver, but because of his hustle. Mm -hmm. He is the reason that that didn't go for a possible TD on the interception because it could have. Yeah, it, it was very much so. And to hear uh, hear the, the about face by the national media, they're putting out some of those clips, trying to find anything positive to say that doesn't contradict what they've already said. Um, I, I think Byron Pringles, it, it, he's always been an effort guy. Now the effort's paying off in ways that we do see instead of those things that he's always done in, in terms of chasing those things down, putting out on special teams. I'm glad to see it for him. I thought Jerry Fountain had a couple of nice snaps on special teams as well yep. uh, in place of Marcus Kemp. We'll see what happens there. The last thing that I think that they have to do is just let Patrick relax. Again, take some of the RPO things out. Let's not make him make decisions. Just let the ball go. Either have a designated progression like a standard pass play as if he were any other quarterback or run the dang ball and just stop having him to make a decision on every play. I think that's when he he's looked his best this season. Yeah, I can't disagree with that. I think that's something actually I said either on YouTube or on Twitter earlier is that one of the things that they need to do is they need to take away some of the RPOs because if they start doing that and they start just running the ball instead of those RPOs, even, even half the time running the ball instead of those RPOs, they're going to be much better than what they've been. And so you sit here and you look at what, in my three things, you have to get Josh Gordon involved. In that Denver game, I will be annoyed if he doesn't get five targets. I know he hasn't gotten five targets yet in his career in Kansas City, yeah. but they have to get him involved. If they don't get him involved, it's not going to matter what the defense continues to do because they're going to be one-sided when they get to the playoffs, and they're going to lose because of it. 
And That's fair. I mean, yes, you have Tyreek Hill. Yes, you have Travis Kelsey. But you saw last year what happened to this offense when they didn't have that third option. McCall Hardman hasn't stepped up. Demarcus Robinson hasn't stepped up. Did he even have a, a target yesterday? 25 snaps? I don't, I don't think he even had so, a no. target. No, he did not so, register a target. Yeah. And, and I understand why this team likes him because he does a lot of the small things and he has good moments at times. But you can't continue to have that year to year. I really hope that they look at signing Pringle long term. I'd like to see a three or four year contract in the offseason. I think they're going to have the money with some other moves that they're going to have to make. But the other thing that they need to do is they really need to look at their defense. And I think there's still places they can improve. Uh, hopefully, Fitton is going to be healthy. We don't know right now. We haven't gotten any notifications on that. We will pro- hopefully find out. Ryan will hopefully find out talking to Matt tomorrow about that. Mm hmm. But I still think that they need to play Nick Bolton more. I think they need to get him involved in this defense, and I think that he needs to see the field 50% of the time. And I think you need to put him at Mike and let Hitch play somewhere else on as a linebacker. Yeah. I know I've been saying that for a while, but give the kid a chance to play. He showed he has the ability to play great down downhill, and if he makes mistakes this year, he makes mistakes this year. Kitchens is still making some of the mistakes that Bolton would make and he knows the defense and he's the leader of this defense. So you have to make a move in my opinion at that, at that spot. And you know, the other thing I will say, we didn't talk about this enough in my opinion, Nick Allegretti covering that punt, (laughs) Tommy Townsend covering that punt. Dave Tobe is bringing some stuff out that we haven't seen and I'm just loving it because he is showing how good of a coach he really is. Uh, This chief's unit is doing very well on special teams uh and Pringle had some big returns yesterday yeah I thought he ran the ball well um I I thought Hughes did a a decent job in the returns as well Mm -hmm. one made me a little nervous but you know it is what it is um he's gonna break one I think before the end of the year yeah I agree like it just feels like it's getting that way and that that's another like unit within this roster that is starting to ascend here as they hit their stride they get their bye week they get a, a lesser schedule opponent wise uh, nothing against the Bengals. So they, I know they won this weekend too. Good for them. Still not that scared. Right. We're going to see what happens to it. Thank you all for listening. This is our Thanksgiving week. Again, we will not have a show on Thursday. We really do appreciate you listening, though, and we hope you've enjoyed it. And I will be back Friday with Mark Schofield to talk a lot about Patrick Mahomes and the season he's had so far. And I'll be with you tomorrow with Matt and Derek so we can get ready for the holiday. I hope you guys are ready for it. Enjoy your Thanksgiving, and I will talk to you tomorrow. Chris will talk to you later in the week.